You are listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. What's going down? It is your boy, Studio MacGyver, and you are listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. Welcome back. Uh, had a long motherfucking week. Um, and I'm going to make a promise to all the listeners out here, man. Really, a promise to myself. This is something that uh, I've been telling myself I'm going to do. And uh, I haven't had time, but now since I got done with God of War. I'm going to make some fucking time for this. And, uh, I'm going to get caught up, finally get caught up on, uh, some anime, some shit that I've been meaning to get back into, um, Baruto and a couple of other things, My Hero Academia. These things uh, will be caught up on uh, between now and the next podcast. So I can talk a little bit about that. And I've been uh, watching a little bit of uh, Ronan Kenshin uh, lately as well. Um, Found a little time delving into that. Uh, Still have another season or so left. But like I said, guys, I've been real busy trying to, you know, manage my time. And, you know, God of War had me by the balls, man. It had me by the nuts. And I still want to play another playthrough with this game. Um, It's just so good. It's so good, man. And I can't get enough of it. But uh, coming and talking about God of War, um, which brings me to a topic. There was an update recently and supposedly this update, man, nerfed a lot of shit um, as far as the uh, the armor and some of the uh, enchantments and shit, man. So I wasn't wasn't too pleased with that. You know what I mean? I don't know if they were doing that because it was they're going to give the player more of a challenge. Or what, but uh, yeah, man. So a lot of the stuff that goes to level eight and seven has been knocked down to like four and five. Uh, so I'm gonna see how that pans out. I might start a new game and 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 kind of get a feeling of how it plays. But if not, I mean, you could always um, erase the update and, and run it off of you know what most of us have been running it on. But like I said, I beat the game you know, before the update and all that took place. So, you know, I got, I didn't have to worry about that, but I, I am going to play another uh, playthrough and um, that might change a little bit, but Hey, you know, fuck it. I mean, if it could give a little bit more of a challenge, you know, so be it. Um, I know the game pretty well now. And I'm at like 84%, I think before I platinum it or whatever. So I'm working on that too. So, you know, just for sport, but yeah, that's, that's got a war right there for you. Um, as far as some other things that I want to get into, uh, a little bit about Nintendo, man. Um, Nintendo, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know, man. I have kind of like a love hate relationship with Nintendo because, you know, they're doing some good things. They're doing some great things, um, on their end, but you know, I feel that they can do a little bit more and that is still why I haven't gotten it yet. I mean, they're like on the cusp of turning that corner. Um, like I said, I spoke maybe a week or two ago about them, uh, and their relationship with Sega. And, you know, I'm a big fucking Sega guy. If you guys do not know, love me some fucking Sega, um, uh, with one of my favorite systems of all time. And, uh, you know, they got some Sega titles coming out to the console and that's cool. That's going to be dope. But it's, they're not all there yet. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of waiting on that. And I'm waiting on a couple other things, man, because now, you know, E3 is right around the corner. We got a lot of things coming up. And I've been hearing talk about the thing that they got now, what they call it. You know, they have an online subscription coming. So basically, you know, I don't know necessarily how much they're charging. I didn't even fucking check that. But I know they have an online subscription coming similar to, you know, what Xbox and what, you know, Sony has going right now. And I'm trying to see what they offer that. Now, one thing I did hear about them having is something I want to say it's called Nintendo share. It's something like, like, you know, PS4 share, except for it's not limited with time by time. 
So basically, you know, if you're playing like Mario Brothers or something, you can um, basically hand the controller over to, you know, a friend online or whatever and let them play. So, you know, back in the day, if you remember where we play games like Mario or whatever and and you'd be playing and you would die. And then when you die, you just give it to your brother. And then when he died, he'd give it back. And it was kind of like a taking turns type of thing, you know, trying to beat a boss or whatever, taking turns, whatever. Um, supposedly that's what uh, this is something that they have uh, and it will be associated with the online subscription. That's all lovely. And that's all good and dandy. But, you know, uh, they also announced something where basically they're going to be releasing, you know, NES uh, titles, you know, through the eShop or whatever. Um, I think there's about 20 of them or so confirmed. I, I know Super Mario Brothers 3, I think, is in there. And, you know, Zelda and some other ones, some classics. You know what I mean? But here's the question that I wanted to ask myself. This first thing I asked myself when I heard this, uh, I was looking at some uh, I was looking at some videos and I was hearing people talking about certain things about the Nintendo. And when I heard this, I was like, well, you know, what about the other, you know, games in their library? Um, you're making all these deals with Sega and these other companies or whatever. Why not relaunch your some of your other hit classics from your, you know, uh, other systems besides Nintendo? I mean, you got Super Nintendo, you know what I'm saying? You have, you know, GameCube, you got Nintendo 64. I mean, why not, you know do that and you know the latter versions or systems you know would be fairly easy now i know gamecube and all that i've heard that you know those systems are kind of pain in the ass to maybe emulate or whatever but you shouldn't have a problem with super nintendo definitely not um you should definitely not have a problem with n64 based you know being that it was cartridge based as well those games should be easily you know emulated and you know able to be able to be converted you know what i mean um those are game changers, in my opinion. Um, some people might deal with that and, 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 and dig that. Some might not. And I know the older players like myself, we would we would definitely love that. I mean, the newer players, you know, a lot of these games, they, don't, they didn't even fucking play. They didn't even own the system. So to them, it's like you don't miss what you never had. But for somebody like me uh, who, who, you know, did live off of Nintendo, did live off of Super Nintendo and came up in that era, you know, I would fucking love to see some of these titles, maybe a Chrono Trigger, uh, maybe like a, um, Nintendo 64, like some of the, you know, W, some of the wrestling games, some THQ, man. Um, even, you know, of course, Goldeneye. What, what about what about that game? Um, and then I did some digging. I said, you know what? Fuck it. Let me let me Google some of this shit and come to find out, stumbled upon some articles. And they were basically saying that, you know, right now, as as we speak, they have no plans on doing any of that. So they're, they don't have no plans of bringing anything virtual from the previous systems back um, and putting it in an eShop, which I think that's money like down the drain if they don't do that shit. Um you know what I mean? And Nintendo games to me, hey, you know, I'm just keeping real with you guys. Um, you know, I got a Nintendo 3DS. So any virtual games, you know, that I want to play, like I have Mike Tyson's Punch Out um, or as they call it, Punch Out. Uh, I have that one on my uh, 3DS. But, you know, those are easily emulated. You can emulate those on a phone, um, a computer, uh like I said, anything now, even my DS, my DS is, I could put that shit on my DS as homebrew. You know what I mean? Um, as quiet as it's kept, but you know, I'm talking about like that 64 man and up. I mean, at least let's get some titles from the 64 man. Um, but Hey, you know, maybe they have those in their back pocket. Maybe, you know, cause like I said, the switch is still kind of, kind of young, hasn't been out that long. So maybe they're holding some stuff for later. Um, I'm not sure, but that would definitely be in their best interest if they uh, if they focused on that. Uh, that's what that's if you ask me, that's what I would fucking do. Um, and then, you know, let them trickle out over time. I mean, you know, you don't have to put them all out at once, of course. I mean, but, you know, put out some here and there and, then you know, watch the library grow. Introduce, you know, young, younger gamers to some of these classics as well. And, you know, it's kind of a win win to me. You know what I mean? I think it's a win win. Um, and then they said it's not, you know, Nintendo is not going to region lock anything anymore. So with that being said, you know, one of the greatest 
one of my favorite all time games of all time is virtual uh, pro wrestling two um, on the Nintendo 64. It was basically a, uh, it was basically like the Japanese version of uh, no mercy or WrestleMania 2000. And, you know, they had Japanese wrestlers and they had different moves. They had a set of uh, different moves and uh, different characters. And then they wrestled in like these, uh, these arenas, man. And they announced their names and then you could actually make your own belts and make your own masks. A lot of things that you couldn't do in the American uh, version of uh, these titles, man. And I just loved that game. And I learned to, you know, navigate the menus with the with the Japanese text and all of that. And they even created like a uh, kind of like a, I don't know, uh, a translation um, guide for that. And I actually downloaded that. It was a lot of pages, but I didn't give a fuck. I mean, I love this game. Um, but and they had you had had super finishers. So like in the American versions, there were finishers, you know, when you, when you get really mad, your meter would get all the way full. And if you toggled the analog stick, you'd bust out your finisher. Well, some of the characters in this game had a super, super finisher. So you could basically let them go, uh, get basically all the way max out their, their, their meter. And then you could do it again, hit the analog stick again, and you would even, it would unlock another fucking move, man. Like it, it was dope. It was a fucking, I, I love that game still to this day. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm rambling right now on, on what could have been. And it still might be, which like I said, I'm hoping, you know, that would definitely make me go buy one quick. Like for real, if they had that shit. Um, but I, I you know, I'll, I'll get there. But like I said, I have to be appeased by what I have to be appeased by before I decide to make that selection. Um, and I'm almost there, but not quite. You know what I mean? So especially with all the good things going on with Sony, man, I don't have fucking time. You know what I mean? To play anything else right now. And then another question came to mind and I wanted to ask myself, well, if they've got this uh, this share, this this Nintendo share thing going on, I mean, how would you communicate with your friend or whoever you, you know, you want to play with? How does that work? Because I'm still kind of in the dark on those uh, on those topics, uh, because if I'm not mistaken, man, they're still very, very, very prehistoric, man, when it comes to uh, the online capabilities, as far as, you know, you know, talking to your friends and communicating, you know, that way. I'm wondering if they're going to be working on some of that because, you know, I, like I said, I still have a lot of questions. I'm still diving in and, you know, time, only time will tell. So we shall see. Um, like I said, if I bought the the uh, the switch, it mostly and mainly be a handheld item for me. I would probably very, very, very rarely play it on the TV. Um, and that's just me, though. But um, we shall see. That is my Nintendo uh, a ramble that is my Nintendo, you know, shtick or whatever you want to fucking call it. Uh, I'm gonna move on, and what I wanted to move on to was I want to talk a little bit about uh, Rocksteady. Rocksteady, uh, if you guys do not know, they're responsible for you know the Batman series, okay, Arkham Knight, all of those things, man. Um, supposedly. Rumor has it that these motherfuckers are uh, cooking up a Superman game. Yeah. And it's supposed to be five times bigger than the last Batman game that they did. Now, that makes kind of that makes a lot of sense because it's Superman and he'll probably be doing a lot of fucking flying. <laughs> no driving Batmobiles, none of that shit. But uh, I'm very anxious to see if this is going to come true. And I, I believe that this is going to happen. Um, they've done so many Batman games already. This this makes sense for them to move around and, and, and challenge themselves and test them, test the waters with another character. And I think they could do some uh, really cool things with the Batman thing. Uh, you know, the idea of not knowing is almost uh, just as enticing. 
and see what these guys are going to do. Because you know they're no scrubs. When they get in that lab and they get to working and percolate, man, they can make shit happen. So I'm wait, I'm ready to see what they're going to do with that. Very, very uh, interested to find out. But yeah, man, keep your eyes open for that, guys. That is coming. Uh, E3, man, it's going to be a big one, man. It's going to be a big one. I cannot wait to find out what is coming. Uh, you know, I think our minds are going to be blown. I think for every system, I mean... I'm not going to say Microsoft, but they could they could they could have something. Who knows? You know what I mean? I'm not going to sleep on them. They could be holding something. But this is going to be the defining moment for Microsoft, because like I said, you know, from all the Microsoft supporters and the fanboys out there, if they don't get what they want this fucking year, man, I see a lot of fucking big changes for Microsoft, man. OK, that's just me. That's just my opinion. And, you know, but we'll see. We'll go from there. When E3 is over and done, then we can speculate more on all of that shit, man. Um, Moving along, uh, got some interesting news or some tidbits, if you will, on Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, This game looks like it's going to be the shit. All right. Uh, Let me just say that. Uh, Talking to some of the developers, listening to them and getting news from them uh, from all kind of sources. Uh, and videos, man, they have been, uh, they, they've been working their ass off. All right. I mean, they want this game to be as real as any other game they've ever made. Um, dealing with this IP. And if you don't remember Red Dead Redemption one and how fucking good that game was, um, you know, it will definitely just think of that game squared. They're about to do some shit with this game. Um, the way that the the world works, I mean, they've mentioned that, you know, you might come across a, a small settlement of maybe just a, a few families. And, and then over time, if you return to that area, it will become a thriving little town. So you might see like one or two, three tents, you know, and you might ride by and then you might come back in game years and game months or whatever. And then next thing you know, you have like you know, a parlor set up and you have, you know, other shit growing and growing and growing. And then by what happens uh, in that town and what happens around you and the decisions that you make might have a lot of influence on what happens to that town or that growing city. You know, it could thrive and and, and you might decide you want to, you know, you could set up there, you know what I mean? And have a spot there or whatever and, and participate in certain things, missions and quests. And in doing so, that would allow, you know, that city or that town that you reside in to grow and prosper and so on and so forth, man. It can also go the other way. It could also go south by depending on decisions and things that you, you decide to do. Um, they said that, you know, you could literally run up on, uh, um, a character in the game, say it could just be a character just, you know, in a parlor, leaving the parlor, you could follow this character and he will actually, he or she will actually go to the chosen destination they might have a house or something. They ride to their house and you get out, follow them to their house. They go in there to a family, which the family is there doing whatever their families do. And you could actually fully integrate yourself into this situation at any time. There might be quests involved. I mean, hidden quests that you may not even known. I mean, all kinds of things, man. So they've taken this and they said that they have going to detail it out to, you know, no end. And I'm anxious to see how this works. I really am. Cannot wait for that. Um, that's just like. The gunplay, I mean, is supposed to be ridiculous as well. It's, it's, it's basically changed up to where basically when you hold down the trigger, I'm assuming it's going to be the right trigger. You don't fire the gun until you release the trigger. So you hold it down and then when you let up off the trigger, then you fire. And supposedly, you know, with the revolvers, when you, I guess, you, you know, in the old Western movies where you have them where they, they take the hammer and they just basically pull back three or four times on the hammer real fast trying to make it like almost like an automatic. Uh, You actually literally have to flick, uh, flick the trigger of the controller and to get that animation and it it, it works and it happens. So I can't wait to see what this gun play is going to be about uh, the new gun mechanics. Um, There's so many things, though. Um, Your gang or whatever you have, you know, your gang is supposedly they supposedly have a bigger, a way bigger role and. Like I said, with the way that the system works, uh, with the avatars and stuff moving around in the world, you know, that's going to dictate a lot of new shit. 
uh, going forward. Just put your mind to this and think about all the things that would that could do and the things that would transpire in this. Now, I don't. This is just all, you know, story driven. Not even talking about like the world. You know, if you know how the online is going to be or whatever, because you know they're going to have an online. And that's going to be very interesting to see. It's just going to be dope. They're going to, I mean, I see a lot of big things. This game is going to fucking do things, man. I'm telling you. Uh, cannot fucking wait. And, you know, that's everybody will get to enjoy that. I mean, that's not a PS4 exclusive or anything like that. So, I mean, everybody, well, you know, uh, Microsoft and Sony will, will enjoy these things. Um, and this is why you have, you know, you know, um, a different game system opposed to or besides, you know, your Nintendo Switch. You know, you, you got your Nintendo Switch that can do things, certain games and everything. And it's, 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 it's the Robin to your Batman. At least it is to me. Now, there are some people who would argue that, you know, Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo above everything else. And that's all love and that's all good. That's how you feel. But games like this, you have to experience, man. You just do. All right. And I'm going to leave it at that. Um, yeah. Now, I also got some news about Square Enix requir- requiring uh, the rights back um, to Marvel for future games. OK, so with that being said, guys, we have a new Avengers game coming. We have an Avengers game coming to the console. All right. Um, and that's good. That's really good if they don't fuck it up. OK, if they don't fuck it up, that's good for us. Uh, I've been waiting for something like this. I want to see how this shit is going to play. There's also been some news, you know, with Rocksteady talking about, you know, the Suicide Squad, you know, so that on their end on the D.C. side. So I don't know, man, uh, you know, we, we we have our Batmans and now it looks like we're going to have our Superman. Um, but, you know, it's been a while since we've had a good adventure game. Um, I want to say like PlayStation 2 xbox 360 days you know what i mean um since i played a solid a solid avengers game you know what i mean so let's let's hope for the best when it comes to that i mean they showed a small trailer it looked like it was maybe like 10 seconds 15 seconds and it was basically like avengers assemble they were you know you saw the shield and you saw like i think iron man's arm like land up under a shitload of rubble and then you know it, it was like Avengers is simple and that was it. That's all I gave. So E3, hopefully we get some love from a lot of these titles. We get to, you know, we get a little bit more that they show us and we can find out a little bit more info. You know what I mean? I'm looking very, I'm looking forward to that shit straight up. Um, there's been, <laughs> there's been a lot of leaks, supposed leaks, uh, you know, that basically like websites like Walmart and Amazon have basically done where you go to the site and then they'd have games where you could pre-order and the name of the titles, you know, are already there in, in essence. Um, supposedly there's a new Assassin's Creed game coming. Um, it just said Assassin's Creed on, on the screen with a, on a black, you know, darked out video game box. Uh, also, um, man, uh, Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell is another game. Um, man, that brings me back because one of my favorite, you know, Splinter Cell games is Splinter Cell Blacklist. And that, you know, I, I own that game on the PS3. So that was a dope game. Um, Splinter Cell would definitely be a, a, a beautiful addition um, on this generation's console. Most definitely. Uh, now, here's something I wanted to. Uh, kind of talk about a little bit. Uh, I wanted to talk a little about a game that is coming out uh, in the very near future. Um, but first, I want to talk about a DLC that I had no fucking idea about um, that is already out. And, I, you know, it's got me wanting to fucking play it. Now, uh, Shadows of War came out a while back. I'm sure we're all familiar with that title. I had a chance to rent it and play it for a little bit, but I had the dumbass assumption and thinking that this game was, you know, a weekend warrior type of game where you rent the game and you're going to play it for, you know, a couple of days and then you're going to, you can finish it. No, no, that's not one of these fucking games. Um, kind of like what I, 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 what happened with God of War, but yeah, this game here, you can sink your teeth into for hours and hours and hours. And, um, you know, 
it's a game that I've always meant to go back to. But like I said, with so many games, so little time and there's other things like anime. There's so many shit. There's so much th- stuff, man, that you don't get time uh, a lot of times to return to your shit. So hopefully, you know, I can return to this game. Uh, there's been a, a, a numerous amounts of DLC already for this title that's already been out and I have not got a chance to play. The game was awesome. Um, from what I played, I gave it a, I gave it a solid eight out of 10, man. Um, and now there's a new DLC that just came out on the 8th of May. Um, and it's a black character, uh, Wakanda forever. And he looks pretty fucking awesome, man. He doesn't, it looks like he doesn't play anything like the protagonist um, of the main, you know, of the main game. He looks completely unique to his own. He's got this dope ass shield. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Kratos' shield, but smaller. Um, for what I've seen in the previews, he looks like he can, he can light it on fire too. So I don't know, man, I'm, I'm interested in playing that DLC. Um, I'm probably going to fuck with them all uh, eventually, but you know, I wait on this game to go down on sale because right now I think you can probably get a dirt cheap uh, or at a, discount of price but you know playstation loves having these fucking like these weekend sales all the time and hopefully i can get it on that you know might be able to get it for like 15 bucks or something on the weekend sale and then i can commence to get the dlc because the, the latest dlc is like 20 bucks so you know what i mean we can get some deals going up in here percolating and then we can get that going put that add that to the library you know along with witcher and and dragon age inquisition and all these other fucking games that i never got a chance to finish <laughs> But it's all good, baby. Eventually, that fate will be met. Uh, that's what gamers do. OK, we create a f- major, major, major backlog. And, you know, it will present itself. The games will present itself. And one day we will finally get to finish some of these games. Um, but, yeah, man, looking forward to that DLC, getting back on that game. Uh, like I said, man, now it's to the point where you just drown yourself in games. It's just like, what do you do? What do you do when you have so many fucking games and so little time? So eventually I have it to the point where I will have a lot of time and I'll be able to set aside some of this time for stuff like this. But uh, now um, the game that I wanted to talk about, guys, that, that kind of just it blew my mind a little bit. Uh, and when I get done with this podcast, I'm going to go and dive into a little bit more research on this game. It basically reminds me of... Uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is a classic, uh, one of my top 10 um, all time games. And it's called uh, Death's Gambit and it's uh, PS4 exclusive Uh, and it's releasing in August, August the 14th. Guys, uh, please check this game out. All PS4 guys. Check this game out. Give it a give it a look. Tell me what you think. Hit me on Twitter. Hit me on, you know, <clears throat> hit me on um, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Um, tell me what you think, man, about this game. Uh, you can hit me on Twitter at Studio MacGyver. You can hit me uh, Facebook at Studio MacGyver and Instagram at Studio MacGyver 79. Holla at your boy. Let me know what you think about this game. The game is called Death's Gambit for the PS4, and it is releasing August 14th, 2018. Uh, from what I've seen in this game, uh, the little bit that I've seen, maybe a couple minutes of it, it looks breathtaking. Uh, graphics, all of that. And like I said, it's a it's it's paying homage to uh, those sprite uh, drawn animations that, you know, Symphony of the Night had. It looks awesome. The boss fights look like they're going to be ridiculous. And uh, I really hope that this game is like twenty dollars because. I think this is one that's going to be worth picking up, man. Cause I was waiting on swords of ditto to drop, which is, it is out now. And I still haven't got a chance to fuck with that. You know what I mean? Me and my, me and a friend of mine are supposed to be getting it, but we neither, neither one of us have gotten it yet. And you know, cause we get caught up in other things that we have to do or whatever. And you know, why buy it if you can't play it? You know what I mean? Right now. So I'm like, eh, and I'm kind of glad I didn't. Cause you know, I'm budget. I got a budget. I got to kind of watch what I, what I spend. And you know, I want that 20 to be like, I want that to be golden. So when I saw this shit, I'm like, yo, okay, that's gambit. You know, it looks like a 20, $30 game. You know what I mean? Uh, it definitely looks like something I'm going to touch. <laughs> no fucking doubt about that. Um, but yeah, check it out guys. Tell me how you feel. 
and uh, we'll go from there. But that's going to do it for the show. Um, yeah, man. Uh, thank you guys for listening. I had to get this done before my son uh, came in from out of town because they should be home any second now. Uh, <laughs> and when he gets home, he's he's going to be wired. He's going to be lit. So um, there's n- there's no telling what time I would be able to record this podcast because I wasn't trying to stay up till seven in the morning to record this shit. So I wanted to get it out the way and uh, taken care of before he walked his tiny little butt in his door. Um, I mentioned it before, but uh, I appreciate everybody listening to the podcast every week. You can catch this shit on Mondays. Uh, you can also check it out on the uh, YouTube channel, uh, Studio MacGyver TV, uh, which mainly I talk about what I'm talking about right now. Anime, video games and, you know, the podcast is up there to listen to if you like. Also available on Spotify, iTunes, all of that good shit. So with that being said, guys, I want to tell you that I love each and every one of you. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you continue if you're new to the show. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what you listened to and uh, there's more of it to come. So I'm going to get up out of here, guys. You have been listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. See you next time. (laughs) 